Okay, so we are doing lab five. Um, mostly, I want to focus on DHCP today because we talked so much about IP addresses and so on. So I want you to walk away from this class knowing how to install this rule on the server. Um, I'm sure I had video on how to create virtual machine and stuff in my other prior classes. So you just need an ISO and then you can just go through the process. It's really easy. Um, so basically you already had a virtual machine that I created and we've been using VM for a while. This is your way of, you know, so that way you can have different experiences with different virtual machines. I know that it's a pain sometimes to copy and paste virtual machine and using a hard drive. Um, but this is my way of, of having you exposure to different OSs in one shot, right? Um, you can use um, server 2022. That's a newer version, but I think most companies are still currently using 2019 for most part. So as we are doing the lab, you need to also update your skills or your skill list or your resume, okay? Because um, that's going to help you remember what you have learned and how you apply your concept. So the beginning of the lab, it talks about dynamic host configuration protocol. This is a very, um, you know, it, it, we've seen this before and it is adaptable for version six, like what you've seen in the last part of the notes. So a server that holds this rule is able to assign IP addresses to the rest of the system. We don't want to manually putting in IP addresses for all the computer. We want each computer to have a unique IP address. So what we'll do is we just create a pool, a range of IP that we can lease the client. This is also allowing us to maximize the IP, how it's used. Because let's say that you have workers that turn off their computer and they might be on vacation for two weeks or a month. Um, then that computer IP can then be leased to other systems, right? So you can set up your lease time and how long that would take. Um, and then, you know, so it allows you to configure the parameters for all client system. It gives you automation. Um, this is how we can scale for the larger network. On the client end, once I authenticate, you know, once I connect with the domain or the network, through the connection process, I'm also able to obtain an IP address. And this can be done for remote users along with the private network or inside your local area network. So DHCP can go beyond just your physical network, right? So if I authenticate through my portal um, and it brings me into my network through remote access, I, my machine would then be able to also obtain an IP. And this is a way that we can validate our systems and control and monitor all our traffic. Okay, so once you connect your USB, you need to copy and paste the folder over only because, you know, down the line, we'll be able to use that machine again or someone else can use it. So on my desktop, um, I had copied that over. Okay. I also did another one, but we'll just run this one. Any question? Okay. So once you've done that, you're going to open up VirtualBox for step two. So I copy and paste my, my um, CIS. 48 server VM over, just drag it onto your desktop or right click copy and paste it onto your desktop. That's step one. Then we're gonna open up our virtual box. You can just simply search virtual box or Oracle that also works. Open up the app. I'm gonna remove this real quick so that way I can re-add it with you. Okay, so once I have my virtual box open with step two, I'm going to click add, go to my desktop. If you see this, just close it. It's just a prompt saying you don't have access to a certain folder. Um, go to desktop, open up my copy folder, 
its subfolder and then click on the VBox file. Now, I, I think most of you have heard this or maybe you were on break and you didn't hear it. I recommend that you change your virtual machine to give it more RAM and processor and this is how you do it. Once you have it on the playlist like this, do not click start yet, right? When you have you at step two and step three, you need to do step four. So we're gonna go to settings, go to network. And remember we talked about NAT, right? It's gonna take your virtual machine IP and convert it to your local area network IP so you have internet access. Server should not access the internet unless we download updates. Server should be only seeing other servers. So we should take this and put it on host only adapter. Again, click the orange wheel, settings, go to network. And on your, you only have one adapter at this point. So you're gonna change the NAT to host only. But I want to give it more RAM and processor and I did not include this step. I assume that some of you have remembered, right? But um, go to system, click on the system tab, change your RAM to 8,000. Click on the processor tab, change your processor to four. It's gonna help speed up the process a little bit. Otherwise it's gonna hang and then there are times that you're like, oh, it's just like not, it's it's thinking, it's not even doing anything. So give it at least quad core and then on the motherboard, make sure that you put in 8,000 for the RAM. Once you have that and your network adapter to host only, go ahead and click okay and then start. So in the setting, we wanna give it more processor, more RAM and make it host only on the network adapter. And if this shows up, click X. Okay, so server VM is gonna boot. Step six, right? To log in, you're going to have to click at the top, input, insert, control, alt, delete, because otherwise you will not see the, the account. So I, I boot it right now, right? I'm going to go to input at the top, click here, keyboard, insert, control, alt, delete. Because if you press control, alt, delete, it's the host computer that it's going to see, right? It's in between. So input keyboard insert control alt delete windows 10 is a little bit easier where it's just you know prompt you the login screen it doesn't always do that when you click in it so once i do that i'm gonna get a login screen hopefully soon <laughs> and then you would log in and your account information i put right here Right? Yeah, mine is uh, it's doing something stinky. Okay. Now, when you get to this part, it might shows like the 10.0.2. whatever. You would click that to change your IP address. Always start your server configuration with a static IP. And that static IP really represent that system in your network, right? You, we can't just randomly give it an IP. That IP has to make sense to that group of server, right, on our network. Yeah, I'm not getting a keyboard. It's not captured. This Mouse see why my mouse integration is not. <laughs> now I have to halt the process. Okay, let's try again. Yeah, 
Give me, give me a second. Let me try my other video. Can you all hear me with the captain? It's on your lap. Okay. Well, we left off, so we're going to log in. Now, it will um, pop up your server manager by default. You're always going to have that. And it's going to list your local and if any other servers that you have. So click on local server. But on your dashboard, it would give you the state of your system. Okay. So we want to go to local server on our server manager because you've seen the dashboard. Just click on local server on the left and you should see your ethernet configuration like what the picture, the screenshot is, click it. And it's gonna take you to the server control panel connection, network connections uh, applet. So once you get here, you just right click, go to properties, and then go to version four, click properties, and then type in the IP address, okay? So I'm gonna do that again. For those who just got on, let me close this. So when I first log in, it's gonna give me this dashboard. And you, you know, the state of your server, it's going to tell you like green is good, red is you have to configure, right? Something's wrong, disable services or something. So, but brand new server, we haven't configured anything. You start up with a static IP address, a permanent IP address that we're going to put on the system because our server should not change IP. So click on server, local server on the left, and then you are going to click the link here, IP address, IP version four address assigned by DHCP. We're gonna make this our own static IP. So click that link. And then it's gonna take you here. We are gonna configure our adapter. So we're gonna right click, go to properties. And we're gonna select version four. It's property, click properties. And then we're going to click this radio button. So with that, what was it? Hold on. Let me get my mouse release. I can be outside. With that, what you see is you are going, you're at this step, right? 10. I need you to put in your IP address, but the X, listen up carefully. Do not type X because we're gonna get an error. Plug in a number in this range. 172.16.0, let's say 104, right? 159, whatever number you want, plug that in here for the X. Do not type X, okay? And Every semester, I always say that, but don't type X, put the number in, okay? All right, I'm gonna illustrate that. So we're gonna put in the IP address here, and I chose class B address because 
I'm not I'm I'm not looking for a very small network. I'm I'm looking to be able to scale, but I don't want a class A address because that's just too many addresses that I might not even need. So I want like a mid medium size to large type of network that should be adequate. Okay. Say it again. It is lagging if you didn't change your processor and your RAM. I mentioned that also. But in order to do that, you have to shut it down and, and change and then restart. Yes, because it's at minimum RAM and, and dual core processor. So we're going to do 172.16.0. So I'm going to pick a different number, right? So let's do 140 for me. And you guys can pick another number at the end there. So your, your last octet must be unique, right? And we schematically need to think about that, right? Like our DHCP should be close to our DNS IP. So if our DNS IP is 172.16.0.139, it makes sense to do the DHCP as dot one forty. Understand, or one forty one for the DNS. So they need to be close together. So that way, when you troubleshoot, you need to understand. Or if you have other DHCP server that's in that range area, so the last octet needs to be unique, and it needs to be close to the other server octet IP. Okay, the last octet for the other server. So when you type that and you click on the subnet mask, it gives you a default class, what? B, right? Network, network, host, host. And then your default gateway is always going to be your router IP. So 172.16.0.1. Okay, that's going to be the, the edge router, the first. The gateway, that's the first system that's seen for my network. Then you are going to, we're not doing DNS much today, but we're going to do preferred DNS. And if you are using the machine as DHCP and DNS, you put in the same IP address. Let me repeat. If you're using that same system for two roles, DNS and DHCP, you put in that IP address. If you have a separate physical computer that's for DNS, you put in that computer's IP, understand? Okay. Because when we configure DNS, you guys are gonna be like, what do we do here again? Which IP address? The IP address for the server that holds that role. So right now we're gonna use the same computer for two roles, DNS and DHCP. So we type in the same IP, 172.16. Dot zero dot one forty for me, and whatever the IP that you use here, you put it here if it's doing two roles. If it's it's like being a single parent, mom and dad, same person, okay. But if you have two parents, mom is different than dad, two separate IP. <laughs> it's at the end of the day. I'm sorry, I'm tired. Okay, click okay. Now, if you don't configure V6, you can leave it as it is, but if you need to configure V6, you click on it, go to its property, and then you can configure V6. Right now, we're not. Click close. Okay. So when you close this, it's gonna take a few seconds for it to update its thing here. So what you can do is you can go to dashboard, and then it, see how it changes? It takes a few seconds to do that. It should show you your IP address here. Okay. You take a screenshot of that? Or yeah, or the, yeah, you can do the property sheet or that, okay? But make sure that you change it on the property sheet. This is important. Otherwise, you don't have a static IP, okay? Whatever that holds. 
Eight thousand and four. You set it down. Okay. Does it make it worth your while? You gotta load it into the playlist. I'm not done to browse to start your virtual box. Okay. But before you click start, please say this one. This one. But you have to add to this If it pings on to your mail, simple will to it to the front of the phone. Oh, and then it's the front of the phone. You can see everything down there. But I think it's all escape to release it or something like that. It will tell you the key on the message. Okay. So we got the IP address set up, right? Now what we're going to do is we are going to um install the server so i'm gonna come back to the dashboard and it's okay it's laggy right uh some of you are like oh it's really slow well if it's really really slow because it's just minimal ram so your server needs at least four gig to run the os so if you're already running the os sometime you know your virtual machine is just going to be slow so come back to the dashboard and then, yeah, your mouse is going to be delayed, kind of like mine too. But we're going to do add roles and feature. And we're going to select DHCP. My disk is also minimal, so. Sorry. So click the first option here. And this is where you, you go to install any kind of role. So your server can have many roles. It can be DNS, it can be DHCP, it can be Active Directory, it can be many things, right? Or sometimes it would be all separate in all physical systems that are separate. So it tells me here that I need to have an account that has strong password, all of that information, just make sure that you record it. We're gonna go next. Yeah, you can do that. You don't have to do that. So this is role based. It's always going to be role based or feature installation. Go next. And it's going to tell you this is the name of your server and this is the IP address of your server. If you don't have an IP address here, you can you should not continue. Okay. But normally an admin would properly change the name, right? I didn't go through that process in this particular lab, but you can definitely go to your system property and change up the local system name. So we would name it something that would fit the scheme of our network, right? So that way, you know, in, in when, when we do like network management, it's a lot easier to pinpoint the server um, outside of the IP address, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and go next. And here is where you would select the role that you want. The HCP, select this. And it's gonna tell you that yes, it's gonna add all of these other features for the server to, we'll go ahead and add it. And then it's gonna go next. 
and we're not adding any additional things. So if you want to add other features and, and roles, you can add it there. We're gonna proceed, click next. And it tells you, it should tell you to install the, the roles and the role services, click install. Um, it's gonna add the remote server administration tool, the role administration tool and the HCP role server tools. So somewhere in the wizard, when you get to a certain step, make sure that you look at your lab document. It's gonna ask you the questions that you need to specify. What kind of requirements that you need, right? So when you look at the wizard, make sure that you look at your lab document if it asks you the questions because, you know, and then if I need to, before you click install, if I need to go back, right, this is where it asks you the question, right? Dynamic host configuration protocol allows the server to assign Lisa IP addresses. We established that. The things to note, you should configure at least one static IP on this computer, which we did, right? That was step, earlier step. Before you install the HCP, you should plan a subnet or a subnet scope and exclusion. Store the plan in a safe place for later reference. So that means that you have to come in with some kind of idea or plan about what kind of IP addresses that you're gonna assign, right? How many group of addresses that you're gonna have, how many subnets, and then your exclusion, what what system in that range that you don't want to, in, to assign the IP to. So for example, I want to assign IP addresses from 172.16.1 to 250. But somewhere in between, there's my server, right? 140. I'm going to exclude that IP address so that it doesn't use it to assign to other computer. You understand? So some of the server IP addresses in that range or the dedicated system we want to exclude, right? And that happens, right? So technically, when you engineer, you should plan better. Right. So when I see that, when I audit, I was like, why are you excluding when you should have just start from scratch? But sometimes we cannot start over. We have to work with what we have. So go next. Answer the questions there. Install. This is going to only take a few minutes. When you see the full bar and it tells you that it's successfully installed and you close. Okay, while it's doing that, I'm gonna come back to the document and I can't release my mouse without doing that. So screenshot, the class of IP addresses, I mentioned that already. Why do we use this IP address as a preferred DNS? Because the server is doing which role? DNS and DHCP, right? It's holding two roles. Okay. So we went through, we answered that questions through the wizard. So when you go through the wizard, make sure that you look at question 20 before you click install. So now once we are here, right, we want to, I want to minimize this so I can I can show you and okay. So it tells me that installation is succeeded, right? I need to click close and then I need to go to my DHCP management console and I need to set up my, my scope for lease, right? That's gonna, these are gonna be the addresses that's gonna be given to other computers. Okay, all right, now come back in here. Once I see this, it tells me that configuration is required. So once you install the role, you're not done, right? I have to go in there and configure. Installation, just make it ready to configure, okay? So you see how they put it, there's a flag here, a notification saying that I need to configure it in the console. And on the left, you notice that the HCP now pops up there. So as you add the roles, it's going to add those there. Okay. Click close. Sorry. Close. And when you can go through here, but, you know, tools, 
is always going to give you all the console that you need for every single role that you install. So DHCP is going to be here once it's installed. If DNS, yeah, I don't have DNS yet, but once I install that, it's going to be here. Okay. So we're going to click DHCP or you can click the message and configure it. See? Complete DHCP configuration. If I click this, it's going to take that there, right? So it tells me that I need to be a DHCP admin, a DHCP user in order to perform the steps. It's just a privilege level in that system. Let me see if I click on it. So when you do that, what will happen is it's going to use those accounts, right? It's going to apply those accounts for the DHCP administration. But can you make a separate account for it? Sure you can, right? That's just a notification. So coming back to my, to my DHCP console, I click tools and DHCP and it takes me here. Okay, on the left pane, it's going to list all the server that I had installed the HCP. So this is the server that we have, right? On the right, there's additional actions for the action. So you just need to expand. And we are going to create a pool for version four and version six. So hold on, I got to release. So sorry. So we are gonna go into version four, right click it and make a new scope. And we're gonna put in the IP address range or in the name. So you would specify however your segment name would be. So let, let's say that like, if I wanted to name San Francisco, Los Angeles or whatever the, the scope for that region, for that part of the network, then I can name it that way, right? So you would, Logically think about like how you want to name this so that way you can quickly identify it. Okay, so I'm gonna shrink it back up so we can see and do at the same time. Okay, like this. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna capture my mouse again. We're gonna go in to version four. We can right click and then we just make a new scope. And it's going to walk you through the wizard. Sorry, I'm going to click next. It's hidden by the see, the caption. So here is where you should just put a new name. So let's pretend that we're going to do branch one. You can do corporate, whatever you want to name this one, right? So I need to bring this up a little bit. Like that, so I can click. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go, once we name it, you can add description if you like, we're gonna go next. So your starting IP address, so let's say that I put here, it says if your IP address is 172.16.23, you want to go a little bit further, right? You don't, you want to keep some IP, static IP addresses for your printer, your other servers, et cetera. Um, we want to put in like 172.16.0. Let's say that I want to go like 180 and the, end, the ending IP, let's say we go to 220. Depending on how many system you need, right? For that scope. Okay. Uh, any number between the 100 to to that the range that I gave you. Any number in, in that num in that range. Okay. Yeah, you can pick any number. 101, 106, whatever you want. 
Okay, so we're gonna use the default length, right? The class B, go next. And then this is the exclusion, right? We talked about the exclusion. In that range of their specific address that you don't wanna lease, you can put in the exclusion. Do you need to put in the exclusion? No, you don't need to put in the exclusion. But in the case that there are servers or printers that you don't want to use its IP address for other system, then you add the exclusion here, okay? So go next. And then your lease, let's put it for 30 days. Most admin would do 90 days. Um, we can do like a 30 days or 60 days. That's up to you and your, your company. So I put that now into the lease period, such as 27 to 30 days. So the more frequent you renew the lease, the more refresh that you have with the IP address, like I mentioned before. People might shut down their computer for a while while they're on vacation. We can use the IP address for the, the other system, right? So if you have a lot more system than your IP addresses, you want your lease to be refreshed more frequently. And then we want to, yes, configure these options now. So that's the default, go next. And then for your router, we just put in the 172.16.0.1. That's your default gateway. And then we're going to click Add. And if you have more, you can add it. I'm just going to use the keyboard so that way my mouse. Okay. So your parent domain, so where am I at now? Sorry, let me get out. Okay, so we did this, right? Um, we added our router. We're gonna confirm the IP address or we use the same IP address. So mine was 140. You just gotta make sure that you put in your IP address and then your so the winds, if the DNS is that same IP, likely that the winds is the same IP address. So put in the IP, click add, um, and then finish. Okay, so my Win server is gonna be the same system as the DHCP and the DNS. So, and then I wanna activate the scope. Yeah, turn that on and finish. So once your scope is there, um, you should see it on the left pane that you created. And you can always also remove the scope, but don't remove the scope when it's leasing, right? So you want to create another scope in place of that scope and then take off the scope that you originally want to delete. Any questions? Oops. Let me go back. Okay, so under your scope, right now, okay, so let's be clear. You're gonna have server options and policy for the overall IP version four. Under your scope, you would have its own policy, okay? Um, your address pool is what you had put in for the start and the ending for the range. Your leases, right, you can also set up on you know, specific lists or reservation that you need and then scope options. So the router, the DNS and the winds, all of that was specified during the setup and then the policy. 
So what we can do is we can create a new policy, right? I have you create a new policy. Uh, well, you're only going to do the intra client and then go next. So let me shoot this back. Okay, under scope options. Hold on one second, I need to, I can't show the display the thing and do it this at the same time. Okay. Um, So I have you take a screenshot of the address pool, right, which shows the start and the ending IP. And you can always pull the, you can glide that over so that way you can see everything. Um, that's step 38. And then go to scope, scope options. You're going to, this is what we configure doing our steps when we create the scope. So take a screenshot of that for 39 and then go to policies. Yeah, I don't think that you are gonna have the intra client. Um, Let me see if we make a new one. Yeah, you're gonna have to make a new one. So I need to fix that step. So on step 40, you right click policy and then you're gonna make a new. So right click, go to new policy and then you can name it intra client and then go next. And here is where you can add. Question. Yeah. That will be class B. Yeah, refer to prior chapters for that. You can add just the 2000 options and then click OK. Vendor class is fine. Go next. Yeah, they used to have a default um, intra policy in there. So, so the current scope, it's going to apply to the range that I have put here. It says if the address range is not configured in this policy policy clients will be issue an ip address in the scope range do you want to configure an ip address range for this policy right so um we can divide up the scope into multiple set of rules right like for example if i have a very large scope i can subdivide it so let's say that i want to only do like 180 to 190 so we can do that 172. 
16.0.180. And then we would, for our ending, that's maybe 10 computers later. So let's say those computer belongs to a certain department. And then we can go next, right? And I will change this up. So what you can do is you can do the standard options. You can do all the prior legacy options. So we'll use the standard options. And then um, we would just do the, we can select like DNS, name servers, and then routers, go next. So with that, I just select router, DNS, and name server for those systems. And go next, and then finish. So for the next few steps, you have to make a policy for it. I don't know. I don't think it's going to put in the intra client policy by default anymore. Uh, and then you can you can specify the range of systems that you want to apply those rules for. And then once you hit finish, so I just use router name servers and DNS, and you, now you would have a policy. Otherwise, by default, they don't always come with policy. So once you have, once you have created a new policy, right? You can also you can use it to set like how you want to deny or allow. So policies are just rules on how you want to use those addresses. Definitely really helpful when you do this for remote access. Okay, any question? So some slight change. Uh, right click. Select new policy. Enter name. Select vendor, Windows 2000, option. Yeah, everything else you can just do. The option stays the same. Then you can also make a new scope for version six. And then you can set the preset. So this teaches you on how you can make this go. So on the version six, just expand, right? And then you can hide, right click, you go new scope, go next. And then you can call this like HQ or something. And on, on the instructions, it tells you you can use this. The, remember that we talked about, so 2306, I think that's what I had you set, right? Let me double check. Oh, 2603, I'm slightly dyslexic there. 2603. And then everything else is zero, zero. And then we're gonna go next, bless you. And so your starting is going to be four, five, six, seven. This is arbitrary, right? Like I'm not, it's not real. Um, and then we're going to do the, for the exclusion, we can go ahead and add this, go next. And then we're going to do it for 50 days. Go next. And then now we're going to activate the scope. So now you have two scope. One, I have it at branch one for the version four. And then the other, I have to at HQ, as you can see there. Right? Take a screenshot. 
and then we close and we answer the question and we shut it down. So be nice to your server, right? We close this, go here. When you shut it down, you gotta tell it why we shut down because we don't shut down servers just like that. We do it for maintenance reason. So when you choose shut down, select the option. So let's say that we have other plan or you can have OS unplanned. So select an option that you want to shut it down. Okay. Any question? Okay. Let me pause the video real quick. And then, oh no, I just paused share, sorry. <laughs>